here we are in beautiful Turkey. We've just purchased our boat. During this process, we found it very difficult to find any information online about it. And we've been asked a few times already about the process and to make a video about it. So we will be doing that. It's mostly just our experience. So hopefully you'll find it helpful. It's not perfect, um, but hopefully it will help in some way. Yeah, as Trey said, it's our experience for searching for a boat in Europe. In the coming videos, part two, we will go into more detail on how to buy a boat in Turkey. Um, we'll run through uh, all the processes, paperwork, uh, attorney, agents, um, survey, C sea trial. trial. Yep, all the things that you'll go through, um, and hopefully that will help um, help you if you are considering coming to Turkey and buying a boat because there's lots of benefits. Yes, and we also got caught out a couple on a couple of things uh, which cost us a lot more than we were expecting like quite a lot more yeah and uh, someone else we know also ended up costing them a lot more if they had have had this information they wouldn't have had to our adventure started six months ago when we traveled from the Gold Coast to Athens we wanted to start in Europe for a couple of reasons we love Europe we've been a few times already and we really wanted to experience it from the water it's a great place to start um, our sailing and also because there are more boats available here and they're quite reasonably priced. Before we travelled to Europe we decided on our budget, the type of boat that we wanted and what we wanted in the boat. Um, we narrowed it down further once we actually got here and looked at lots of different boats. Um, there's so many different types of boats, so many different year models. It's hard to really get a feel for exactly what you want until you look at them all in person. Really? We also had an idea of the extras or inventory that we wanted on the boat. Uh, we looked at manufacturers' websites to find out exactly how much they cost um, to put into the boat. So we had a bit of an idea and could judge different values of boats online. Um, for example, we wanted things like a water maker, generator, um, solar panels, as we will be doing some hopefully long passages. So um, it's good to know exactly what you want in that area as well because um, that sort of thing can all really add up pretty quickly. We found the best site to search for a boat is Yacht World. However, many of the ads, pictures, inventory and description cut from previous or similar boats. With this in mind, we had some key questions for each broker we contacted. Take 1006. Hype down you. <laughs> Many brokers won't reply, but don't take it personally. Boats are sold on the website and just not taken down. Quite often also, agents are on the road and don't have time to check their emails, or they just miss your inquiry. My recommendation is to call the agent, that way you get your answers immediately and we found that they always answered their phone, or most of the time. Um, just to be aware though that many agents aren't in the same country that they're selling their boat. Um, we found in Italy there was agents in Malta and it took time to actually organise a planned trip. Once we had communication with the broker and we were happy with all the answers to our questions, we'd then start to speak to them a bit more about the price. Prices are usually listed online, so we had a bit of an idea, but we also wanted to make sure that it was good value for money. So um, we were told before we left Australia that we could probably negotiate around 20%, but when we got here, we found it was more like five to 10%. Uh, we're not sure the exact reason why, um, it was in summer when we came, so there's probably more people looking to buy, less people wanting to sell their boat then. And there was also recently the hurricane before we got here, which um, meant there was probably less, less supply as well and more demand um, for boats. And so yeah, that was our experience, what we found. Um, we'd usually approach the, the broker and find out what the lowest price was that the seller would be willing to accept. Um, if they didn't give us that information, then we'd just throw out a rough price and see how they reacted to that. Um, this was quite important for us because we didn't want to travel, um, spend time and money looking at boats that we didn't feel were value for money. It's an exciting yet daunting process. Uh, you want the boat to be the boat of your dreams, and it can be, but remember to check all the information on the website. 
Most of the time the brokers will have a disclaimer stating at the bottom that the information might be inaccurate. Um, it's also important not to get overly excited, uh, especially before you put in your offer, as you don't want the broker to know how much you love the boat. They may be trying to hide the bad things or make them look better than they are. Turn things on, look for leaks, corrosion, check the bilges, keel bolts, engine and the engine hours. Navigation instruments, sails, rigging, batteries, inverter, all electrics, tanks, mast and rudder as much as you can. Also get an idea of how the boat has been used, maintained and where it's been taken. Also find out if any and when any equipment has been upgraded or replaced. If large items of equipment have been added after purchase, check the quality of equipment and the installation. We videoed all the boats we viewed as it's really easy to forget areas of the boats afterwards when you're making decisions, especially if you've looked at a lot. It's also handy to have a record of all the inventory on board. The biggest expense you'll find travelling around Europe searching for your boat is accommodation. Um, now we travelled around for six months and we used Airbnb for the majority of our stay. Um, we used it in Croatia, Montenegro, Italy, Greece. The only place we couldn't get was in Turkey, um, but it was by far the best option. Um, the most expensive was Montenegro. We paid 55 euros. That was during peak season um, and the cheapest. The rest of our trip was pretty well about 30 euros a night. And they all had great views of the water. Um, so I definitely recommend Airbnb for your travel. Here is a look at some of the accommodation we stayed in and their prices. We would always book places with a kitchen. This reduced costs of going out. The longer you stay in a property, the better chance you can negotiate the price. We stayed in split for one month in the old town and it worked out 20 euros per night. Thanks for watching. Hopefully it has helped you in some way. If you are looking to buy a boat in Europe or Turkey, we would have liked to have had a bit more information uh, when we did it. So yeah, hopefully it helps. Again, it's just our experience. If you have purchased a boat before in Europe, um, you could always, and we've missed something, just yes. leave a comment below um, about it just to help people really. Um, part two of this video will be about buying in Turkey. Um, as mentioned, we'll go through lots of details. So if you do want to see that video, uh, maybe subscribe so you don't miss it. Um, it will be worth your while. If you may say so yourself. I think it will be really helpful. <laughs> yeah, I think it, will. it would have helped us a lot. And it's just peace of mind coming over knowing what to expect. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. Um, we are just about to leave Turkey. We should get our registration in the coming days. Um, and then we have to export, which is part of the process, and we're off to Greece. So you'll see these videos, the future videos will be of us sailing to Greece. Yes, so exciting. Exciting, yeah, really exciting. Cheers. Take 1003.